Thanks, Matt, for the intro. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we're going to talk about suspension. And uh, this is a, a, a brand new summit expert. That I, I, I want to lead this uh, uh, seminar with the fact that the summit expert is the best suspended sled that Skidoo has ever released in a summit lineup. It is a really good system. There's really no need to uh, improve the suspension. If you're an average rider, it works really, really, really good. Uh, they, they did a good job. There's some things that I do that's very unique with my suspension setup, and I want to go over that with great detail. I want to answer all your questions and be very clear about what I do and why I do it. And it's all in the interest of giving me more control in backcountry technical terrain. Who likes to ride technical stuff? Trees, deep snow, yeah. You're all my riding buddies. So, with, with my setup, it's easier to balance your sled. It's easier to maintain control, okay? And the, the number one, the unique thing that's different about what I do than anybody else in the industry is I like to run with my limiter strap all the way out. And the first thing you do when you hear me say that is like, it's gonna be a wheelie monster, how are you gonna control that? How are you gonna hang on to it? Why would you ever wanna run your limiter strap long? And so first I want to address the why. Okay, I can control my ski lift, we'll get into that later. Um, I started, uh, I've been developing tuning suspensions for, um, I don't even know, way, I'll, a long, long time. I had, I raced for 15 years uh, in Rimshaw, and the key to winning races was to have a good suspension set up, not only uh, among other things, but suspension was very key. And to win a race, you had to have a track on the ground moving you uphill all the time. If the track left the ground, you were not propelling yourself anymore. So it was very important to keep the track in contact with the snow, and that's what I focused on. And uh, so one of the challenges in hill climb competition is keeping the front of the sled down on the snow, or down low enough that you can control it. So in a, in a perfect world, I want my skis off the snow because there's no resistance if your skis are, are in the air, right? Uh, if they're dragging in the snow, and in the case of competition hill climb, it's dirt, it really slows you down. So you want your skis uh, to not contact the ground. But I don't want them high in the air. I want them to be six inches or so off the snow, and that's all, and carry them. Uh, and I want the track to follow the terrain. So I want the front of the, the track to go into a hall and crawl out of it, and I want the back of the track to, to follow suit. So the typical hill climb setup is uh, to keep the front of the sled down is to shorten the lunar strap, tie the lunar strap up, tie the rails up so you don't have any, any suspension travel and that adds pressure to the skis. It keeps the skis down, and it gives you the control you need to go up the hill. The problem with that concept is now you're dragging the skis, or you can't, it's easier to drag the skis, but most importantly, your track's spinning because it doesn't have good contact to the ground. If the front of the sled comes up a little bit, the track comes up with it, and you and it's not it's no longer in contact with the ground, and so I want my my ultimately I want my my track to follow the depressions in the terrain, and I want it to follow go over the bumps, and I want to want it to stay in contact with the ground at all times, and so for that reason I I run my liver strap out all the time. Uh, any expert owners in here today? One. 
The rest of you haven't picked up your experts yet. There's another one. Okay. So, Scooby offered this as an accessory last year, maybe the year before, but there's a there's a quick under strap adjuster feature on the expert. And it's actually really cool. You just you just take a hold of the handle and rotate it around and you can switch it from short to long in an instant and it gives you the uh, uh, opportunity to adjust that blender strap uh, in, in, a, in a matter of a couple of seconds. You don't have to get your tools out, throw your sled on its side and work in the ice and bloody your knuckles to make a liver strap adjustment. It's, it's pretty cool. For the most part, I'm never going to use that and I'll I'll get into that, but but it's still functional. And so what I've done with my setup is I've lengthened, I've I've extended the lumber strap, so lumber straps all the way out. Uh, this adjustable limiter strap feature uh, used to adjust from long to short, and now it adjusts from extra long to long. Okay. So it still adjusts, it's just at a different uh, step. Uh, how do I control ski lift? Uh, the ski lift control comes from my rear suspension setup now. And uh, uh, in, in order to keep the skis on the snow or near the snow, I have to have a stronger torsion spring a much stronger torsion spring in this case, so that when, uh, when I'm on the uh, throttle accelerating up the hill, the weight of the sled's going to transfer back and be applied to this rear suspension mechanism. And it's, it will, at that point, squat the sled, it'll collapse the spring, and uh, because it's stronger, it takes more effort to hold it up. And I'm not a very big guy, so how does that affect my ride? And it's, it's automatically, if I go to a stiffer spring, it's going to be a much harsher ride. But this particular spring has got a longer tail on it. And if I can point out this point right here, it's where the factory slider is mounted. So this is this is the leverage point for the factory spring. I've got a tougher spring, but I've also got a longer tail on it. So my leverage point is out here now instead of back here. It's about, I don't know what it is, four or five inches different leverage point. So now I have more leverage on the spring. It's even though it's a tougher spring, it's just as easy, easy to collapse. So I've still got maybe a little, a little more spring rate, but I've got, uh, I, I have a comfortable ride, okay? What happens now, as I get part way into this, the uh, stroke of the suspension, the spring leg will make contact at this point. And when it does, now it's, uh, it's uh, I've, I've changed my leverage point, so now it takes more work to continue to collapse the suspension. So effectively what happens is, under acceleration, the sled will squat until it reaches this point, and uh, the skis will come off the snow and hold there, and it's manageable. I, I'm keeping my skis so they're down to the point where I can manage it, they're not clear up in the air. And this is the adjustable feature, so to back up, the factory adjuster is still in place. This is to be, uh, uh, this adjustment is for your rider weight, uh, including uh, the weight of your tunnel bag and, and whatever you, gear you might have in it. But this is your rider weight, this is your comfort adjustment. This adjuster is this sled transfer adjuster, so if you have uh, if your skis are coming too high, if you have more transfer than you want, you just rotate this hex block to move the triangle up further, and that will uh, change the contact point during your stroke and keep the sleds even more on the ground. Uh, 
Any questions on what I've described in the rear suspension? Some questions to ask. Uh, how far should, when you get on it, does it, when you turn that, should your sled sink? You see what I mean? So it's like preloaded. When you put your gear on and you get on, how far do you think it goes? Uh, there's really no sag in the suspension. Uh, these suspensions are not designed to have sag in them. Okay. So the, the question is, how much will the sled collapse with my gear and my body on with this? Um, snowmobile suspensions, as they are with all brands, with one exception, and I'll get into that, Skidoo, Polaris, Arctic Cat, they have a dead spot at the top of the travel. And this one, this is more or less a dead spot. It has no uh, shock action, or very little shock action. The first, like, two inches of travel, okay, it's dead, and it, 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 it doesn't really do anything. The exception to that is the BRP links that's not available in North America. Uh, has a different suspension on it with different geometry. Um, the rear, this shock is mounted up inside the tunnel. Uh, it's completely different geometry. Uh, it's much heavier than this, and that's why we don't use it in North America because, because of that. Uh, it is an advanced suspension for rough terrain, but not for powder. Um, and that suspension does have sag. It's built into it. It will sag about three inches, just sitting steady, and more when you stand up. So, great question. Uh, so, there was one one detail that I left out, and an, uh, uh, an advantage to letting this front arm out, the loader strap all the way out, is now when I get my sled up on its edge, uh, I have my snowmobile supported on three points. Uh, the ski, Aaron, can you help me for a minute? I have to hold the mic, so I'm kind of helpless. But when I have the sled supported on three points, is that good or should we push it out? Can you can you push on that? Just push on the slide rail, and when he when he kind of if he was standing on that driving along a slope, he'd have his weight on the sled, and the front the front of the track would be engaged as it as it already is. But if you can imagine if I if the under strap was pulled up, and you can see my my straps are actually not holding. The suspension's all the way out, and the shock itself is limiting the travel. The shock is fully extended. So, uh, my uh, support points on the snow are the ski, the center front track, and the rear axle. If I pull the lumbar strap up and collapse this suspension, then the front of the suspension will no longer be engaged in the, onto the snow. And I only now have two contact points, the rear axle and the ski, and the sled doesn't want to stay on its edge. The sled wants to go back to two skis uh, without this contact point in the center. And so that's really a really big thing when you're traversing a hillside and how much effort it takes to keep it on its edge. Uh, so the, the sled from the factory has a, a reasonably wide balance point because when you're on your edge, the ski shock is going to be collapsed more than this demonstration shows. Even though the linger strap's shorter on, a, on the factory setup, the ski shock collapses a little bit and, and the rear springs collapse a little more, and it allows the center of the machine to become engaged in the, in the snow and, and help you hold it. So, uh, from the factory calibration standpoint, it does work. It's, it's easy to uh, maneuver in the hillside. Uh, the, this, the one thing that I don't like about it 
is the front springs and shocks are calibrated to share the work of holding the weight of the sled up. When you get it on its edge, it, is, it gets really mushy because the shock spring package by itself doesn't have the uh, capacity to hold the weight of the sled up. And that's why it's important that you maintain the sway bar. If you notice, my sway bar is missing. And with the factory package, uh, the sway bar hooks the two shocks together so they, they tend to share the load to some degree. Um, the advantage of having, go ahead and set it down. Thanks, Eric. And if I stand, if I just put a, apply a little weight on the running board, you see I get some shock action here. Okay, if I apply enough to bring the other side up, it doesn't take, the, the uh, suspension doesn't collapse very much the other, before the other side starts to lift. That's what I want. With the factory calibration, uh, because it's not strong enough to support the weight of the sled by itself, it's going to squish way down. This side's going to squish way down before the other side lifts up. So how's the expert package working? Since I have one coming in, how does it rate against what you've got set up from your own, uh, well, your own uh, did you hear that, Brent? The question is, how does the expert package compare to this? Um, I, uh, when I started this discussion, I, I shared with you that the expert package is the best suspended summit that Skidoo's ever released. Okay, it's it's not. It doesn't do what this suspension does. Um, it's it's hard to compare it. Um, what I would like to point out, though, is it does squash down. If I want to bring the sled to its edge, it'll squash down before the other side comes up. And I, I don't like that squishy feel. A lot of riders, maybe some in this room, like to unhook their sway bar because they think it is easier to bring over. Well, the, the chassis rolls, but the ski doesn't come off the ground. Okay, all you're doing is squashing the shock all the way down. And you have a really spongy feel. When you're on your edge, you have a really spongy feel uh, with the ski and how it's engaged in the terrain and the snow. And with this system, when I am traversing a hill on my edge, I have a good solid feel of the ski action and how it's engaged in, in the snow. It's There's no, there's nothing squishy about it. It's a it, it's a solid feel. I know what's happening. I don't have to look. I know what's going on. Uh, and so that's that's the big difference in this and the expert or the uh, X package summit to that degree. So, Facebook question: um, Weston Deutschlander is asking, what does Brett think about ski bushing stiffeners? <coughs> Ski bushing stiffeners. Ask him to clarify. Thanks, Weston. St ski bushing stiffeners. Uh, is he talking about the rubber on the bottom of the spindle? Ask him. Let him well, that, the expert comes with that, the ski, ski bushing stiffeners, but 2019 or previous doesn't, and it creates that ski look. I think that's what he's trying to clarify. Like You can buy aftermarket ones. Would it help improve our 2019s? Or 17s yeah, and 19s yeah, without buying your without that's buying right. the whole that's right. spindle okay. setup. On so I'm sorry that I didn't recognize that the aftermarket calls it a ski bushing stiffener. Right. Okay. Uh, so I'll talk to that and uh, maybe Aaron. Monster makes a stiffener. I don't think Monster makes one too. I know. Monster makes one. Yeah. yeah. So how do we pull this up so the scale dangles a little bit? Yeah. And I'll talk to them. Thanks, Weston. So this is a brand new sled with zero miles. If it had some a uh, few miles, so everything was broken and loosened up, the ski would actually tip down. The ski tip would tip down a little bit. But I can I can bring it down really easily, just like this. Or I can bring it stops here and it stops here. Uh, if you compared this with a 
non-expert with, with a last year's summit or even a this year's summit, the ski would stand more than that. It would come way up. And the problem that that creates when you're traversing a hill and uh, the, there's a bump and your ski connects with that bump, it'll tip up and it'll stop that sled at that point in the back end will wash out. And you've probably all experienced that. This new spindle addresses that issue directly. And uh, uh, you, there's a spindle kit. I personally haven't run the, the Munster fix and any of the aftermarket stuff, and I, I've heard they're effective. Uh, you can buy the expert spindle package through the accessory catalog for a couple hundred bucks. It's a pretty easy fix, pretty affordable fix for that. You're not replacing the whole spindle. Yes. yes. It's the, it's the spindle and the ski rubber. Same ski, new spindle. It's a great upgrade. So for 2020, the expert comes with the spindle and so does the free ride. Everything else has the old spindle. It's a great upgrade. It's very noticeable. Very, very noticeable. But to, to go along with that, um, when when I have the higher capacity spring rate on the front, I have a good solid feel for what's happening. I can that that spring. If I hit a bump in the snow with this with with uh, uh, with a standard summit suspension, that shock will tend to bottom out because it doesn't have the capacity to hold that much weight. It, it'll it'll bottom out and the ski will tip up and. Uh, and it'll stop you. With this one, the, you can't bottom that spring out uh, traversing that hillside. It's, uh, it, uh, and I want to tell you a little bit more about the spring package. This is a dual rate. You can see there's a short spring and a long spring. And it's a dual rate, but when you see a dual spring combination, it's always a progressive rate package. This is put together as a digressive it, di it digresses. As it collapses, it gets easier to collapse, which is kind of hard to wrap your mind around. This was developed for Formula One race cars. Any Formula One fans in the audience? A few. So you understand that uh, Formula One cars are small and fast and they have about that much ground clearance and they run around uh, 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 Le Mans course, and there's no bumps because they don't have enough suspension to handle a bump, okay? But they have curbs, it's, it's a race, and it's all about going fastest, and if you shorten your distance, you'll get to the end quicker because it, uh, you didn't have as far to go. So they try to cut the inside corner, and there's a curb there, and it's painted red and white if you've watched it on TV, and that that when you run over that curb, you need a suspension that will handle the load, okay? Uh, but if they, if they use a progressive package, then the suspension is really mushy at first and the car will roll. And, and you know, in a Formula One package, you don't want to experience any chassis roll because it makes you go slow. So the way they addressed it was they went to uh, degressive spring rate and so this has got a good firm ride initially as I demonstrate a good firm ride it's not too firm but it's firm and you can see that I don't have any action in this short spring only the long spring okay and then when I get to a point just when that other ski starts to come up you can see a, the, the secondary spring chart to move when that second spring starts to move, that's when your spring rate decreases. Good. Yeah, I can see it. I just have a question because I'm on, up, I'm on your website and you have titanium versus stainless steel for the springs. What's the difference, Marty? Thousand bucks. Yeah, it's all that. <laughs> <laughs> Go with titanium. <laughs> so the difference is weight. The the calibration is equal, the durability is equal. 
all you're paying for is reduced weight. How much would that weight be? It's about three pounds plus weight for a thousand dollars. Couple Facebook questions. Uh, Nelson Gerard, do you use the Skins Post Forward Kit? Do I use the Skins Post Forward Kit? This sled is equipped with this Post Forward Kit, and uh, Skins actually builds this for me, and you can buy, buy them. And uh, if you're going to do anything to your summit, if you're going to do anything to your expert, the very first thing you should do is consider a post-forward kit. And this might, uh, the original location is here, and the new location is about two inches forward. And what this does is it, is it brings my body position forward on the sled. So they have original position here and new position, two inches forward. So it brings my body position forward. What does that do? Why is that? Why is that good? The the weight mass of the sled is the engine, and when I'm closer to the engine, I have more control. There's less rider input uh, to accomplish the same thing. The closer to the engine, and it is really pretty amazing the improvement that you get from that. Uh, will a beginner rider benefit from it? Probably, but they won't recognize it. An advanced rider will definitely recognize the benefit. Okay, Get, getting forward on the sled. The other thing is a is a tall guy with long arms. What happens to him is uh, it's hard to ride with your elbows bent for very long at a time, and so you find yourself clear back here on the sled, and you're way behind the balance point. And the sled's doing this all day long, even with good suspension. And so, two inches of uh, steering post brings the tall guy forward to where he's a lot closer to the balance point. It makes a huge difference. Can you just lower your riser? Can you just lower your riser to, to uh, accomplish the same thing as a post forward? No. Um, the lower in your riser will bring you forward. Okay, there's no doubt about it, but not enough. And uh, actually, the bottom of the post stays in the stock location, so I'm pivoting the top, and what, what it, so it's standing that post up about a degree and a half or something, not, not a substantial amount, but it makes it taller. So when you, when you pivot it forward, it brings the handlebars up, which in most cases is bad, so at this point you need to consider lowering your bars again. But I talk about lowering bars all day long, and I don't want to get into that in this class. How does that differ than the just rotate the handlebars? Ah, great question. So you can move your handlebars forward by pivoting the uh, uh, bar riser, okay? Pretty easy fix, right? And then we're forward. Yeah. Yeah. So when you bring your go this way, when you bring your uh, bar riser forward up here like this, it brings the handlebars across the center point of the sled, and it leaves the rider at a leverage disadvantage. It's pulling my body mass across the center of the sled. It's okay to move the steering post forward and rotate the bars back. But moving the moving the post back and, and pivoting the bar riser forward is it's never good. Your 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 bars rotate in a really awkward uh, arc and it does not work. Facebook question. Um, Rick's tuning in. I've only been watching for a few minutes, but has Brett um, discussed T motion? I'm guessing delete or T motion so, in general. Uh, this sled still got an active T motion in it, and T motion is is a, uh, it makes the sled lay over. Okay, 
because the suspension kind of flexes. So initially, the, the suspension flexes, the track stays flat on the ground, and the, and the tunnel rolls over, and it helps to bring the sled to its edge. That's the theory. Uh, I, it it kind of goes back to the stiffer shock spring capacity. I want a good solid feel. I, I want to know how the sled's engaged in the terrain. And when I have looseness uh, be caused by the T-motion or whatever else, it gives me uh, a, a bit of a squashy feel. Um, but it's really only a concern when I'm in really steep technical terrain. Okay. In, in moderate terrain, it's never an issue. In, in really steep terrain where most riders don't go, it can become an issue and it can cause washout because uh, the, the track is not solid in the snowpack. It wants to, it, it tips a little bit and washes out. It's kind of like having, losing your edge on a snowboard, having a round edge instead of a sharp edge on your snowboard. Any questions? So what kind of adjustments, if any, can you do to a stock 2018 Summit to keep it, keep that wheelie down? Is there any? Well, um, the suspension, the, the question is, what adjustments can I do to a stock Summit to keep the front end down? And the factory provides for you to suck your linear strap up. That's the, that's the built-in adjustment to control that. Uh, without changing any springs, uh, you can uh, tighten up your tension on your uh, rear springs. Now, this, because you, you, if you tighten this adjuster up, you're adding preload, but you're not increasing spring rate. And what you need is spring rate. Which preload will help a little bit, but not not enough. Uh, there's that, and you can uh, adjust the preload on your ski shocks as well. But you'll never get to where this is. Okay. Um, any more questions? I mean, your kit on mine, obviously, the stainless steel minus the titanium, but what do you get with that? You get the front shocks, you get the rear tunnel shock, or the, the whole so thing up there with the, the... The suspension package that I'm talking about, that I'm describing, it includes four shocks. So you get two ski shocks, you get the center shock, you get the rear shock. You also get uh, the springs, the coilover package for the ski shocks, you get the springs for the center shock, and you get two new torsion springs, plus you get the triangle slider blocks. You get the whole package. Everything is included, even a template so you know where to drill the hole. You have to drill one hole. It's this one right here, and that's all. And if I take your writing class and bring my expert package up there, and you, you'll install it? <laughs> yes. I will install it. <laughs> I was going to direct you. <laughs> Not you personally. <laughs> of course. We will accommodate your needs. On that rear shock, so like on my expert, it has a spring, coil spring, then it has the adjuster, a red dial adjuster on the very yeah. back shocks. Yeah, it's, okay. So, yeah. so what's your question? So on this one, does this rear skid shock have the adjustments so the question is if the expert is coming with uh, a, a remote reservoir rear shock with an adjuster on it it's got a, com a compression adjuster on it that's a good thing especially if you like to play with your suspension okay uh, it doesn't have any other adjusters on any other shocks just the rear ones yeah okay so two things this is a backcountry sled I don't Right, fast typically. I'm 30 miles an hour through the timber is pretty fast. So my suspension isn't working a lot. 
if I if I head down the trail, headed to the truck at the end of the day, and I do five miles of moguls, I get to the uh, trailhead and put my hand on the shocks, they're going to be hot. Okay, uh, I don't really care. Uh, if you get a hot shock, you're uh, you're going to get shock fade and some performance and loss and so on and so forth. But um, my sled's not set up for burning down the trails. Uh, a remote reservoir is good because for for that purpose because it includes cooling capacity. There's more oil to heat up. Uh, there's more area cooling area. So. Uh, that's that's the advantage of the remote reservoir. The uh, compression adjuster gives you the ability to adjust compression dampening, which is a good thing. I don't offer that on my package for only one reason, a couple of reasons, I guess. Cost is one, you start out and give each cost more money. Number two, there's more things to break and go wrong. Uh, my sled's a backcountry sled, and I want it to work in the back country. I don't want to have to be dealing with broken suspension or broken anything else. I keep it as simple as possible. With, uh, I like gimmicks, but I don't, I'm not gonna use a gimmick if there's not a direct advantage. So I don't use uh, reservoir shocks. That doesn't mean that I, keep, I, I could get Fox to build a reservoir shock for me and an adjustable shock. I don't, I don't feel like there's a need for this application. Is, is that shot an air or just an oil shot? There, okay, the question is, is this an air shock? And I think you're meaning a Fox float shock, okay? Yeah. So, uh, no, it's not a float shock. It's uh, because it's got springs, okay? Right, this, this, oh. this is a torch. Oh, right, right, right. right. Okay. So there's no need for an air shock. Okay. Hey, Brent. Uh, regarding chassis length or track length, you talked about lengthening the, the limiter strap out. Is that philosophy the same for a 146, 54, this one, now and up to 173, or does it all depend on track length? So, uh, my suspension allows you to lengthen your limiter strap. And uh, without having this extra capacity on the back end, you can't get away with a long limiter strap. And 154s rotate easier than 165s, but it's less about the suspension and more about the track length and, uh, and, and trenching. So the reason that a 154 tends to rotate is because it digs the snow out faster and and make, builds a bigger hole faster, and that's why it tends to lift the skis more. It has, it, it's it's less about the suspension. So with that in mind, the loader strap um, has a little effect on that, and that's why I think it was Tony commented during our pro panel that. Uh, if you go with a 154, you need to consider a two and a half inch lug because it doesn't shovel as much snow as fast and gives you more control. Uh, great question, Winston. Uh, we do have a women's specific class coming up. It's listed on our website. It's mid to late February, you know the date for sure. Um, it's coming up. Uh, but yeah, it's women specific. And we accept women in our daily classes as well. So um, love to have you all. RideRasmussenStyle.com. We operate in uh, Western Stone, Montana, and other places around the world. The date is 14, 15, February. 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 Take it away, Matt.